What is up, everybody? My name is Nick Green. And I am Kenan Gates. And you're listening to Grounded in Greenville on WZMB 91.3 FM Greenville. That was Buy Dirt by Jordan Davis featuring Luke Bryan. And you can't buy happiness, but you can buy dirt. You know what else you can buy? You can buy season tickets to ECU football because the football schedule was just released today. Um, and we're going to talk about that here in just a second with our ECU sports update for the week. Nick, that was good. I'm not going to lie. Oh, that thank, was a good one. That was a good one. I came up with it right on the spot. I'll give you some credit. <laughs> thank, thank you, brother. I came up with it right on the spot. I'm actually pretty proud of that one, actually. But, uh, but yeah, sorry about that. I got choked up for a second. But let's go ahead and talk about ECU football schedule this week. Starting off at home, or yes, at home against Norfolk State on Octo- October. Golly, we're not starting on October. August 31st. Then we're going to Old Dominion. Then we're coming back at home to hopefully beat the crap out of the Appalachian State Mountaineers. I said it here fo- first, folks. Hopefully, we're going to beat the crap out of the Mountaineers on September 14th. Then we travel to Liberty to hopefully take care of the Flames. Then we got the uh, UTSA Roadrunners on Family Weekend on September 28th. Before fall break, when we go to Charlotte, North Carolina, to hopefully beat the crap out of the Charlotte 49ers as well. Then we go on the road to Army, October 19th. Then on October 26th, we're back at home for homecoming versus the Temple Owls before we have another back-to-back game or back-to-back games against the Owls, except not the second one's not against the Temple Owls. It's against the Florida Atlantic Owls on November 7th. Then November 14th, we'll play the Tulsa Hurricanes. And then 11, uh, 1123, November 23rd, North Texas, before ending the season off, before our bo- big bowl game, which we will 100% be making it to because I'm calling it here first, uh, against Navy on either November 29th or 30th. That is up in the air right now for military appreciation. That is our football schedule. Cannon, what are your thoughts on this so far? <sighs> Nick, I hate to say it. If we don't win at least eight games, that's what I'm counting on. Mike Houston. Oh, he's out of here. 100%. Yeah. He's out of here. He's gone, folks. He, we got to get him out of here. <laughs> he don't win at least eight games. I think more honestly, some people might say nine, ten. I've seen people say nine or ten games. With the talent we brought in, yeah. there's no excuses anymore. And honestly, we're playing a, hard, a less harder schedule than we did last year. Oh, oh 100%. Uh, I think a lot of – because a lot of these teams – the, the teams that we're playing, though, we played them last year. Yeah. You know. But I think a lot of those teams, because it's a it's mid-major, they're going to transfer out. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, you look at this right here. Let, let's 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 go run f- through these real quick. Norfolk State, we're, we're, we're beating them. Old Dominion, we'll probably beat them. App State, that's gonna be a listen. Letter. Listen, yeah. I was kind of joking with you earlier. We beat the crap out of App State. I would love to beat the crap out of App State. Yeah. I think that would be awesome. Bring them here to Greenville. Win forty-two to three. We storm the field because that's what they did to us. We're gonna storm the field against App State. If we win, I promise you, what I'll be the first one on the field. Uh, we're storming the field. You know, uh, I think, not to incriminate myself, but we're storming the field. <laughs> <laughs> I think App is. I honestly don't know how much App lost. I don't think they lost much, but I don't we either. brought it in so much. It and we. I know, like last year, it was a I, close game. We got a couple of defensive touchdowns, but like, and I, I know this was early on in their success. Yes, last year, but we should we should beat them. We, we I really hope so. should. And like, don't get me wrong, Joey Aguilar, fantastic quarterback in yeah. State. Do not get me wrong. But I want to beat the crap out of App State. Me too. And you have no idea how badly I want this to happen. Then we're on the road to Liberty Flames. This one I'm 50 50 on. Yeah, they did make a New Year's Six Bowl last year. If honestly, a lot of it depends. Liberty has a great, they had a great quarterback last year named Caden Salter. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's still with Liberty or not. Uh, uh, I'm not um, sure. If and, you can look that up real yeah, quick. Yeah, I'm going to um, look that up. And then also, they have Jamie Chadwell. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a great. Yeah. Absolutely. I think even without uh, Caden Salter. Still, so that's still a great. Uh, so no, he will be with Liberty. So he will. Okay, be. he went to transfer portal and came back to Liberty. Okay, that's right. I think I actually knew that, but I forgot. So Liberty Flames, I'm fifty fifty on. Yeah, I think that's one that. I think for, Liberty beats us. I'm not for the lie. sake of the argument, let's say Liberty beats us. So I think two eight, two. I think eight games. We I think I said we win eight games. So that means we lose four. For the sake of the argument, let's say two and two. Yeah. Uh, for the sake of this, let's say we lose to App and we lose to Liberty, which I think are not bad losses. No, not at all. Yeah. By the way, I'm 100 percent looking to go to that game in Liberty. 100 percent looking to do that. Looking to get myself a ticket for that. Um. Then we're at home against UTSA. UTSA lost a lot of yeah. talent this year. I think they're honestly one of the top ten schools in production lost. Yeah. I know they have Frank Harris. He's gone. Who's their quarterback? Plus, they had the American Defense Player of the Year. He transferred to Texas. Yeah. And that dude was a stud. He was a He had, like, 16 sacks last year. Oh, my word. That guy was so good. And I think they lost a decent other amount. So, 
So, well, I think we can beat UTSA. Then we're on the road to Charlotte on fall break. We should I, beat Charlotte. I think we, we can should beat Charlotte. Be Charlotte. I think we can beat Charlotte, beat Piff. Beat Biff. Sorry. Last year we were terrible and lost them by three points. I know. I mean, it's one of those things. We were awful last year. Lost. We shouldn't have lost to them last year. Yeah. We Honestly, that was one of the – nothing was more infuriating than that game against Charlotte for the simple fact that we just would not replace Mason Garcia to save our life. Yeah. That man had, I think, 30 yards going into the fourth quarter, and yet we were still sending him out there. Yeah. And I was like, this is pitiful. Yeah. This is absolutely abysmal. There's no reason for this. Um. Then we have Army – I think we can beat Army. We should. There was a close game against them last year, I think. We didn't play Army last year. I'm thinking of Navy. Navy. Navy I'm thinking Navy. Yeah. Uh, so then we got Temple. We'll probably beat Temple. Florida Atlantic, we beat them last year, and we were awful. So I, I think we can do take care yeah. of business against Florida Atlantic. Uh, Tulsa, I'm not sure how, who all they brought in. but I they Tulsa, if I'm not mistaken, doesn't use much NIL money. Do they not? I think I saw something that said they don't use NIL money. So well then we'll probably beat Tulsa. We should then. beat Tulsa. We'll probably beat Tulsa then. Then North Texas, I think we can win that game, and then Navy. We didn't we we came close with Navy last year. Yeah, Navy we can't. We I always think we come might close. have lost. Here's, actually, no, no, no. Here's the thing, Navy. I think we can beat them. No matter how good of a year we have, we can never seem to beat Navy. Yeah. If we drop, uh, so once again, I think we might drop Navy. Yeah. Just because of the fact that we typically end up dropping Navy. Um. So yeah, that's. Ten, uh, we, and th- 10 and 3, we're we saying. Counted th- we counted three <laughs> losses there that we can, like. And the thing is, with our schedule, we're saying we could lose one. And, oh, you know, 100. when you say that, you say you think the floor is, like, 5 and 7, and yeah. you're not mad about 5 and 7. I would be furious with 5 and 7. Oh, absolutely. 100% like, I would be furious with 5 I think I'm going to be mad even if we only win seven games. I'm not going to lie. I think I would be mad still. It depends. I think it depends. I think it depends on how the games go, Yeah, obviously, but I think I'd still be, not mad necessarily, but I'd be upset, I I guess is a better way to put it. But it's 100%. Football season, I mean, football season's coming around in the fall. We just got the schedule today, and obviously it's one of those things that we're both very excited about the talent that we are bringing in for ECU football. I think we're going to be a lot better this year than what we were last year. I think it's hard to get worse than what we were last year. Yeah. And if we get worse, I promise you it's going to be a clean sweep of everybody in that building. Except for John David Baker, he can probably stay. Well, if we have a worse season. If we have a worse season than last actually, year, you know, I don't actually, know. actually, you're right. If we have worse than last year, John David Baker might not be staying either. But I love the hiring of John I David do too. Baker. I, I love the hiring of most of our coaches. I do, too. I do, too. There's so, no one I don't like. We brought in some homegrown guys. We brought in John David Baker. So yeah. there's definitely some interesting stuff. But, you know, before we run out of time talking about football, that's me and Nick's favorite stuff to talk about, obviously. Let's we always... transition to some other ECU sports because yep. there's a lot going on right now. So oh, let, yeah. let's transition a little bit. ECU baseball. Yep. Let's transition there. We had a huge weekend this past weekend against UNC. We both went to the game on Sunday, and then we lost on Tuesday to Old Dominion. Cannon, run us through your thoughts of what happened this past weekend and on Tuesday. You know, I, I think a lot, and people are going to say that it's kind of like not necessarily a trap game, but the, it's a – you come off af, after a big win. Yeah. And you drop to a team that you should beat. Yeah. It's one of those – like um, – It's the midweek games. Um, It was – who was it? It was UNC basketball. Because, I mean, the people know. They lost to Georgia Tech. Mm-hmm. They – who they should beat. They beat Duke that Saturday, and they smacked the crap out of Duke. I don't know who they yeah. played the next they, two – They beat Clemson. They lost, they lost to Clemson, Clemson that next game. You see on exactly what yeah, I'm talking about? You absolutely. Go in, it's a, the, the game before is a trap game because oh, you, your mind's not fully on the team you're about to play. It's on who, who's coming up. I don't think Campbell was a trap game because Campbell, we all know, was good. Campbell, we and all know. And they're a rival. Yeah. So that's not a trap game at all. The game after is a letdown game, and that's yeah. what this was against Old Dominion. Well, you got to think, it's, too, with how many pitchers we went through in that last game against UNC, we didn't have another pitcher – in the reserve, who had not at least been used in that entire series. The five guys we used were obviously, you know, the five guys that pitched. Were yeah. five of the, all five pitched. I'm trying yeah. to – I'm going to f- tell you who all five pitched, and they all pitched on uh, Sunday. I know we had Norby go out Norby there. started. He went He went to let up – gosh, my thing – okay. My thing is being weird right now. Uh, he went to two hits, two run runs, one walk, one strikeout. He's a freshman. I'm not as mad about Norby yeah. uh, about not playing well because he didn't play great on Sunday either. More mad, Jaden Winter. One inning, two hits, three on runs, three walks, two strikeouts. Yeah. Can't have that. No. That Jackson DeLorenzo. Lorenzo. Jackson he, Lorenzo. He was good. Freshman got the win on Sunday. He was good. Two innings, one hit, three strikeouts on Tuesday night. Then Chris Collar. I like Chris Collar. I also like Chris Collar. We talked about on th- last mm-hmm. Thursday. I wish he pitched longer against Campbell. Yeah. One inning, two hits, three strikeouts. 
the saw. And then the shank, obviously, he he's the one that let up the the last run of the game. But still, two point one innings, one one hit. He had the homer. He, he had the homer, but you got to think. I mean, he was pitching fine before that last homer. Four strikeouts. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where you sit there and you're like, okay, you give up a homer, it sucks. But like, I'm not gonna put that. I'm not gonna beat you up too much for that. Especially I mean, had four strikeouts. Exactly. I mean, it's one of those things that you sit there. Um, but it's you sit there and like, granted, Cliff Godwin said we have a lot of pitching depth this year. And I, I, you can see it. You can see we have the potential there. I think it's because it's so early on in the season is the reason why you haven't seen the production out of some of these pitchers that we've seen. You've seen some, but you haven't seen the consi- the the great production that yeah. we that we want. I think it's just because it's early in the season. Besides our top three guys in Shank and Di Lorenzo, Di Lorenzo's yeah. been a bright spot these first couple of weeks of the year. Besides them three and Shank, really, I'm not going to count Di Lorenzo because he's a freshman. Yeah. Besides them three and Shank. Really, our pitching has not been what we really hope it could be. Right. and But are, are you saying you're hopeless about that? No, I'm not hopeless at all. Okay. And the reason, yeah, no. Now, the reason why I'm saying this, I think Godwin, because it's still early on in the season, the, he wants to use all our guys and see who he can use. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Because uh, obviously, you know, we pitched 10, like nine guys, I believe, against UNC. We pitched five guys on Tuesday. Yeah, we had a lot. Yeah. So. He wants to see who can really go out there and perform. And he's going to, like, when it gets later on in the season, he's not going to be using all these guys no. in these situations. Like, Drew Bryan, I never heard of him when he pitched on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Dealer Renzo I hadn't really heard about until Sunday. Now, De Lorenzo looked good. Yeah, he looked great. He looked great. On, well, I didn't get to watch on Tuesday, but by the stats and everything, it seemed he looked, like he, he looked good on yeah, Tuesday no, as well. I said, I- when De Lorenzo went out there, I could not watch the game. I was on the phone with my beloved brother. But uh, it's one of those things that I still was keeping up with it. I was keeping up with the stats during that game. And I mean, he he was pitching great. I mean, I had no problems with De Lorenzo at all. No, yeah, I I'm not saying I'm not hopeless at all. I'm just saying he Godwin wants to see who can go out there and pitch because mm-hmm. it's just a very interesting interesting thing. Before we run out of time, we're just gonna yeah, knock out some more yeah, things real quick. Say, we, we could we could get talking about this for a long time yeah. if you give us the time of day to do it. So we're gonna kind of quickly go through the last little bit of it. Yeah, Clark Claire Classic tomorrow yeah. it starts. Cal State Fullerton versus Southeastern Louisiana. They'll be playing at 10 a.m. In um in Clark Clare Stadium, and gates open at eight. If you want to get a ticket, then uh then two p.m. we'll be playing Purdue. ECU will be playing Purdue. Go I'm assuming you Savage will be on the mound again. I, would, I would hope so. I would think so. Um then Saturday, Southeastern Louisiana versus Purdue. They'll be playing at eleven, uh, and then we play Cal State Fullerton at three thirty. Um and then Sunday, Purdue versus Cal State Fullerton at nine a.m. and then we play Southeastern Louisiana at on at one p.m. Uh, versus South Houston. Yeah, we play them on Sunday at 1 p.m. All these games on ESPN Plus. Uh, <laughs> happy. Yeah. yeah. Thank, <laughs> and then thank you. Thank also, you, I just wanted to say real quick, we do play VCU March 5th and 6th uh, next week. Spring break, mm-hmm. that's obviously what most people want. We'll see that, but I just want to shout that out. Yep. And then to wrap up our show today, we do have basketball two nights. Yes, sir. Against the Memphis Tigers. Pack out Minji tonight, 7 Wide p.m. Out. Wide, Wide out. out. Uh, on ESPN, too, if you can't be there. Yeah. Well, Got to see that. But it is in Minji's. We do play the Memphis, uh, Memphis Tigers. If can't be there, should be a great game. Yeah. And then uh, our women's, they dropped a, a tough <sighs> one to North Texas. Yeah, they did. Four, I think four overtime. overtimes, yeah. I think the final score is 93-91. 93-91 was the final for that yeah. one. They dropped four overtimes. I mean, you hate to see it. Especially um, against a good team. North Texas is yeah. a good American team. They're up there in the top three. Granted, it's one of those at this point, with how the American is going right now, if if, if you're any team in the American, you, you want to just make the American tournament. Yeah. You can make it that tournament. It's anybody's game. Yeah, for sure. And then on, I believe, yeah, Sunday, we will be playing the Temple Owls, and that will be in Menji's, 2 p.m. If you can be there. Yep. Um, and the Temple, another good team, 11 and 5 in the American. Yep. We're 8 and 8. We need another win. Let's hope we can get against Temple. Yeah, absolutely. I, th- I would love that. I think we'll, at this point, with us getting this close to March, we got to get, we got to get these wins in here in order to make sure. I mean, Temple's our last home game of the year, so let's make sure we can do that. Um, big game for us. If you can make it out to Menchie's Coliseum for any of these games, or if you can make it out to Clark LeClaire Stadium, make sure you do that. Support our Pirates. We need all the love we can get. Get all the support we can because, I mean, you saw it on this weekend on Sunday when we played UNC. That environment, I mean, Cliff Godwin said it himself. Without that environment, he's not sure we win that game yep. against UNC. Well, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for you guys this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will not be with you guys next week because it is our spring break, but we will be with you the week after that. So I hope you guys have a wonderful spring break if you guys are ECU students. Uh, If you are not, I hope you guys just have a great rest of your week, great weekend. 
great week next week, and we will be with you the Thursday after that. So until next time, I'm Nick Green. And I'm Cannon Gates. Go Pirates.